Hello, my name is Andrea Cruz Brown, and today I'm going to tell you about my philosophical analysis. I chose Thomas Jefferson as my philosopher because of his lasting effect on education and the government at large. So just to give you first some background about Thomas Jefferson, he was born in the 1700s to a wealthy plantation and farm owner in rural Virginia. Due to his wealth, his status was slightly different than those around him, so he was able to advance in education and obtain a great deal of education when others were not. He married Martha Skepson and had two children, and after her death, went on to have a partnership with Sally Hemming, one of his slaves, and had six more children. During his life, he worked in politics as well as education, serving as the governor of Virginia, a U.S. prime minister in France, um, as well as the U.S. president. Throughout his lifetime, he was an avid reader and was author of many important documents, one of which was the Declaration of Independence. His philosophy on education is centered around educating all individuals. So he believed in universal education, where individuals were able to obtain education based not only on their wealth, but based on their capabilities. He was a proponent for board schools, which would give small schools um, large amounts of land and like small amounts of student body in different areas of Virginia, and that Virginia would end up controlling these board schools. And he wanted this to work in every state, so the government wasn't controlling education, but instead the states themselves were doing so. He also wanted levels of education to occur, where those individuals who showed the best academic gifts were able to continue advancing, while those who weren't would end up learning information more about their trade. When trying to classify him as a liberal theorist, or any type of theorist, it was very difficult because he kind of fell into so many different categories. But I think liberal theorist is the closest due to his time, period, and belief in the Enlightenment. His practice would be what's considered today lifelong learners, where he advocated for individuals to continue learning throughout their lifetime. Also, as he said before, universal education, as he believed all individuals had the right to education and knowledge, not based on their wealth. Again, the educational track system, which I think is shown today in many school systems where individuals can take like a technical career path or college preparatory. He also founded the University of Virginia as a model university as he was not happy with the different university systems that were already offered. When actually analyzing Thomas Jefferson, his effects are so, so long lasting. Um, whether it be the Declaration of Independence or the Bill of Rights or different ideas that he came up with through his presidency, first in Louisiana. So there are all of these kind of political things. But he also did a great deal of stuff in education as well. He agreed with many previous philosophers that educating the masses was going to become necessary. That way government could continue. And he felt, similar to Pestalozzi, that educating the masses would help government and economics. He also was affected a great deal by medieval philosophers, as well as philosophers of all types who came before him due to the benefits of the printing press, as he again was such an avid reader. He was different, though, from philosophers such as Calvin and Mann, because they wanted religion to be incorporated into education, and he was a firm believer of church versus state. Overall, I think all we can ever hope as educators is that we have an effect on a student and have a lasting effect. And even just having a fraction of the effect of Thomas Jefferson, I think, would be a goal worth striving for, um, as he was able to do so much. He always desired to learn more, and he, again, was just so influential. I think I personally relate to him because my family would tell you that I have a school problem. This is my third master's degree. Um, I am very interested in learning and will get kind of the hair to learn something and then become very focused on it. I think he was the same way. And it would have been very easy for him to accomplish any of his tasks, becoming the president, writing the Declaration of Independence, right, founding the University of Virginia, things that an ordinary person would do and think, I'm done, like, what more can I do than this? And that never happened for Jefferson as he was continuously striving to do more. These are just the references um, that I used to in my presentation, but thank you so much for your time.